All right, so I am here with former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden. Hi, Charlie, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing very well, uh, considering, so. So you've had an incredible career, test pilot, Marine, astronaut, NASA Administrator, um, and these are just a few of your accomplishments. You've also been a leader as not only the first and only African-American NASA Administrator, but also as a black astronaut and as a black man who came up through the Marine Corps, rising in the ranks time and time again. So I'm curious at the moment with nationwide protests against racism, against police brutality, what's been on your mind these last few weeks? Oh, it's been interesting. And I, I've been uh, telling people it, it's this, I'm on a constant roller coaster of being very angry uh, and then being hopeful. Uh, and I, what I, what I try to do is, is work really hard such that the hopeful moments outweigh the very angry moments when I want to just grab somebody and choke them. Um, but, but, you know, I, w the good thing is for me is I've, I've been through this before uh, a number of different times, most especially when I was at the Naval Academy and getting ready to come out of the Naval Academy in, in the late 1960s. Um, and, and you know, the, the hopeful part always comes when I reflect on then, when we were, we had violence in the streets because we were uh, at each other about two big, big things in the war in Vietnam and the civil rights movement. Um, and yet we, we landed a human being on the moon. Uh, so I, I tell people, you know, that, that sort of was some of the symbology of two weekends ago when we launched Demo 2. Um, and I think there were a lot of people who had hope that that would be a, a, some unifying force that would cause things to get better all of a sudden. But, but I always remind them they didn't get better after Apollo. Uh, you know, and, and Apollo, as a matter of fact, didn't enjoy the, the grand popularity that, that the myths tell us it did. You know, hindsight, uh, people looking back who weren't there don't realize how NASA struggled uh, just, to, just to get that mission done uh, over the protests of people in the civil rights movement, people like Reverend Hosea Williams um, and others who actually went to the Cape to protest the launch and tried to get them to call it off uh, with the Poor People's March. So um, th though I, that's one of the things that gives me some hope, the fact that we've been through this kind of thing before. And, but my hope is that young people will cause us to go much farther than we've gone in the past so that we can actually solve some of these problems. Absolutely. Um, so obviously, given your unique perspective because of your uh, unbelievable history, both in the military and with NASA, um, I assume that you have probably the, the best view out of any person on the planet of, <laughs> <laughs> of you know, just in general, of course, um, but also how prejudice has played an active role, both in the military, but also at NASA. It's a very it's a very palpable reality that has existed and grown and changed throughout history. And it's an ugly truth, but it is something that, you know, has to be faced. And so I'm yeah. curious both how you've seen it grow, grow and change, but also from your perspective sitting now, what you would tell the agency and what, what advice you might give them. You know, I try not to give anybody advice because, uh, uh, it, I, you know, putting myself in Jim Bridenstine's place, he, he gets more than more than enough help, I'm certain, from people. Besides, he has a National Space Council that I didn't have to worry about, uh, headed up by the vice president. So, so I am absolutely certain he gets more advice than he needs. Uh, but I would, all I can do is share with people my experiences and the, the, the successes and failures that I had during my time as the NASA administrator. Uh, and I, I have told people over and over, it, it took me a while to catch on. I'm not sure that some people would say I ever caught on in, in the almost eight years, but my first two years were really tough because I, I didn't understand the landscape of political Washington, D.C., so I had to, I had to learn that. Uh, the other thing that was important to me was the issue of diversity and inclusion, and, uh, and I really wanted to take that on as a personal challenge at NASA. Um, and so we did things like form a diversity and inclusion council, uh, and I became the, I told everybody in the agency, all 18,000 people in the agency knew that and our contractors knew that I was the diversity champion for the agency. And I asked the other center directors and other senior leaders to, if they did not want to be the diversity champion for their organization, they needed to, to provide to me the name of somebody who was senior enough who could speak for them. So um, some of the things I was able to accomplish when I left 
the general counsel for the first time was an African-American woman. Um, and, and the good thing is Samara is still there. Uh, I had two female deputies. Um, and, and although I was incredibly disappointed that I was not succeeded by a woman that would be the first woman to be the NASA administrator, those were the kinds of things we were trying to do. Um, we don't have enough representation in the astronaut office uh, by women and minorities. The, the good thing, to be quite honest, is that you would be led to believe that women run the astronaut office because many of the, the standout astronauts of late, at least, if you're talking about Peggy Whitson or, or any of the others in the last three to four years, uh, you would be given the impression that women are in great prominence and, and they actually run the astronaut office because they are the performers. But you and I both know that given an opportunity, uh, you will excel and you'll outdo your, your male journalists frequently. Uh, and that's not, I'm not just saying that, you know, because I'm talking to you. But, uh, but those are things that we have to do. We have to have more representation from women and minorities. Um, you know, we don't have yet, uh, got to think about it, we've not had a, a, an African-American crew member on the International Space Station. And uh, that is long, 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 long long overdue. Victor uh, Glover is in training right now to be one of the first commercial crew members to go up. But, uh, you know, whether or not his crew stays on station for a prolonged mission remains to be seen. So um, I'm hopeful that that will happen anyway. Mm -hmm.